I'm drawing the general places where the wrist flexors and extensors attach. So let's go ahead and start naming all these. I'll show you the naming convention that will make learning the names of these muscles extremely easy. We already know that the muscles on the palm side are flexors and the muscles on the back side of the hand are extensors. Next we need to make explicit which side of the wrist the ulna is on and which side of the wrist the radius is on. The radius is on the side of the thumb and the ulna is on the side of the small finger. The last bit of information that you need to know is that carpi means wrist. So with this information, we can tackle the names of these muscles easily. Let's look at this muscle. It's a flexor because it's on the palm side. It's also on the side of the radius. So the name of this muscle is flexor carpi radialis, which means it flexes the wrist on the side of the radius. So that gives you a sense of the naming convention. Let's look at this muscle. Even if you've never seen this muscle before, you might be able to guess correctly its name. It follows the same naming convention as the muscle we just looked at. It's on the palm side of the wrist, so we know that it flexes the hand, and it's close to the ulna, so we use the word ulnaris. Now we just add carpi, which gives us flexor carpi ulnaris, which means wrist flexor on the side of the ulna. The middle muscle here doesn't follow this naming convention, so let's skip it for now. Here we are on the back of the wrist, so that we know that all these muscles are extensors. So let's look at this muscle, and it follows the same naming convention as the other muscles we've talked about. So first we need to know um, whether it's a flexor or extensor and it's on the back of the wrist so it's an extensor. It's on the side of the ulna so we need to add ulnaris to the name. We finish the name by adding carpi so this is the extensor carpi ulnaris which means wrist extensor on the side of the ulna. Here we will need a little bit more information to know the names of these muscles, but we can tackle them together. They are on the back of the hand, so they are extensors. They are on the side of the radius, so we add radialis to the name. And we also need to add carpi, and here I'm just using C to stand for carpi. In naming these, so far we have followed the naming convention. The difference is that there are two muscles here. We distinguish them by lengths, so one is the longest and one is the brevis. I have to admit that it's hard for me to remember which is the longer and which is the shorter, so I use a mnemonic. The longest attaches here, and in my mind I draw lines up the finger into the thumb. It looks like an L, so this one is the longest. The brevis attaches at the base of this finger, which is the finger you use to give the bird. So I use the B from bird to remember brevis. Armed with these two mnemonics, it will be easy to remember which is the longest and which is the brevis. Now back to the palm side and the muscle that we skipped. Unlike the muscles that we've talked about so far, this muscle does not attach to a bone. The tendon fans out into the palm. This muscle is called the palmaris longus, 